What's happening guys, this is Greg Happ here from Menagerie Studio and welcome back to the After Effects Basic Series. Today we're going to dive a little deeper into the program, we're going to go over basic masking techniques, a little more advanced keyframing techniques, and uh, see if we can turn this shot into this. Let's get started. All right, here we are back in After Effects. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to check out the first episode in this series, I urge you to go back to there if you're just starting out in the program. If not, we're gonna pick up right where we left off and we're gonna tackle a little more advanced stuff today. Having said that, we gonna be catching a vibe today. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is come up here to our new composition in the dropdown and we're gonna create a comp. Uh, this one's gonna be at 25 frames a second cause that's just the footage that I'm working with. It's a little strange. Um, just make sure whatever footage you're working with in this case, you match the composition to that frame rate. So we're gonna go ahead and name this uh, Vibes. <laughs> Keep it at five seconds, 1920 by 1080, click okay. All right, so we have a new composition here. First, we're gonna take our base background layer. As you can see, it's kind of bland, not too much going on in the sky. So what we're gonna tackle first is a sky replacement. So in order to do that, we're going to start looking into masking, which is a really powerful tool in After Effects. Pretty simple to use once you get the basics. So we're gonna wanna come up here and you see this little pen tool here. Click on that. And then you're gonna wanna make sure you're on the first frame in your timeline. That's important when you're starting a mask, especially with moving footage. So now that we have our pen tool selected, we're just gonna go ahead and zoom in here. And we're basically gonna cut out the existing sky. We're just gonna cut it out because it's kind of bleh. So we're gonna come in here, zoom in, and I'm using the space bar to bring up this little hand that kind of lets me roam throughout the composition once you are zoomed in. So, starting with the pen tool here, you're just gonna click. That's gonna start a new mask. Every mask that you create will be different colored. It's a kind of a color coding system. So for this one, we're gonna just start, go through here and just cut out along this tree line here. It doesn't have to be exact, but the more exact you get here, the better results you'll have down the line in this project. So we're just gonna kinda come through here. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna speed this part up, but basically, you're just gonna wanna go along the entire length here. It can be a little time consuming, but it'll be worth it, I promise. So let's do this. So you'll notice if you made a selection that you're not quite happy with and you want to go back in and adjust it, if you go anywhere on this line you created, it'll bring up a little plus symbol. That's basically giving you the opportunity to make an extra little notch here that then you can click and drag. But then you'll notice whenever you go to continue your mask, it'll start a new mask. So basically to avoid that, you just want to make sure before continuing, you want to click at the last point of your mask and then continue the mask. Just a quick little tip that I'm sure you'll run into once you get more into masking. So let's go ahead, finish this up. Okay, so now that we've gone through and cut out our mountains here, you just wanna click out of the frame around and close it off where you started. You'll see it'll bring up a little different cursor there with a little circle on it. That's basically just saying you're closing the mask. So now, as you can see, we have just the sky here. So in order to edit further, you're gonna wanna click on the video down here and just double tap the M button on your keyboard. That'll bring up all of your mask options. So you'll see you have mask path, feather, opacity, and expansion. We'll get to those in a bit. As you can see here, you have a little drop down bar. So in our case, we want to do the opposite of what it's doing now. So we want to subtract the background, not add. Perfect. So as you can see, we have a nice transparent grid. We can stick anything we want back here, which is awesome. That's exactly what we're looking for. And even though it was a quick masking, it seems to do the job pretty well. We can adjust it further in the future. So we're gonna wanna go ahead, grab our new sky. And by the way, 
All of these assets are coming from uh, an awesome website called Storyblocks. Uh, it's not a sponsor, but they have some great stuff, a lot of stuff that you can play around with and uh, kind of tailor to your own needs. So we're gonna wanna adjust the positioning of this sky a little bit just to fit our frame. So we'll go ahead, hit P on the keyboard while selected on our sky layer, and that'll bring up the position. We're just gonna click and drag this up a little bit just to position this so it looks a little more appropriate with our framing. I think that's pretty good. Now, to adjust this mask a little bit, because you can kind of see some of the background peeking in a little bit, it just, it's not clean. So to do that, you're gonna wanna focus primarily on your mask expansion and your mask feather. Be careful not to overdo the feather too much. You'll see in this case, if I bring it up to say 50, that really starts to kind of muddy the waters a little bit here and doesn't give you a solid mask. So I'd say, you know, go light on the feathering. We'll bring this to five in our case, just to start out. And that's pretty good. It kind of just blends it in a little bit. And then the expansion, this is where we're gonna kind of choke that mask in a little bit and get rid of that background blue hue that we're seeing right now. So in our case, since we have a subtract mask, we're gonna go higher on the expansion. If you have an add mask, you're gonna wanna go lower on the expansion. So for example, if I do negative 10, you'll see that'll start doing the opposite of what we want to do. But if we go 10 in the positive, now that starts choking it down a little bit. That might be a little too much in our case. So we'll bring it down to say three. Now you'll notice these trees back here, they're, they're really out of focus. The depth of field is more focused on the foreground here. So we are gonna wanna match our sky to that a little bit. And basically the best way to do that, that I have found, is just to come back into our effects and presets. And I already got it typed in here, just type blur. And we're gonna just throw a quick camera lens blur on the bottom sky layer. So you'll notice if we increase this, say to 50, we start losing some of the edges here. And a quick way to fix that is just this little node right here, repeat edge pixels. Bam, that'll bring us right to the edge of the frame. And in this case, we don't need 50. I'm thinking more like 10. That's even a little much there. We'll say seven. Okay, I think that'll suit us just fine. Now, if we go ahead and render this out here, you'll notice that our mask is kind of creeping up a little bit. And that's because we're working with a shot that's not entirely locked down on a tripod. So a quick, easy way to fix that is getting into the mask path here. And you'll notice this little keyframe here. Make sure you're at the start of your timeline, right where you made your initial mask. It's all good, it's all lined up just how you want it. If we go ahead and click on that stopwatch, create a keyframe for the mask path. Then we're just gonna wanna come all the way to the end here, where we see it starting to creep up. And we'll just grab that mask and just bring it right back down and you'll notice since we have that stopwatch enabled it created a new keyframe for us which is perfect now you'll notice when we play this when we scrub through that mask will move perfectly along with the camera movement so that's going to do just fine for us right there okay so we're done with our mask options here so we're going to go ahead and close that and now let's get into matching these two shots a little bit through a little basic color correction so one of the most powerful tools for color correction inside of after effects is going to be your curves if i could spell curves effect here so we're going to go ahead and just drop this onto our foreground shot so you'll notice you'll get this little graph here and it says RGB. So that's basically affecting all the colors at once. So if you go ahead and just click and drag down on this a little bit, it'll darken everything. It's your light and your darks. We'll just give it a little bit of a shallow S curve here. And you'll see already that's kind of matching with the sky a little bit more just by brightening it up and giving it a little bit more contrast but we wanna take a little bit of the red out of this. So we can click on this drop down menu and just go to the red channel. And if we just click in the middle, and this will be trial and error, bring that down just the slightest bit. 
you'll see that's already making a huge difference in just blending these two shots together a little more so there's no funny business going on. It just looks like it was meant to be. One other thing is I think the saturation of the background is a little high compared to our foreground shot. So we'll come over here again to effects and presets and just type hue, find hue and saturation, and this is gonna allow us to adjust our saturation very quickly. So we got our master saturation here. In our case, we'll just bring it up to 15. You don't wanna overdo this a little bit or you'll start getting a little a little wonky. I mean, that's, that's what you're looking for. That's pretty dope actually, but we'll bring it back down to 15. And yeah, I think that's really blending together really well. You'll see it's not perfect though. This is our little problem spot right in here. So if we just come back in, open up double M on the mask, and we'll just go ahead, grab one of these. These are all adjustable. So if we grab that and just bring it down a little bit, Bit, just to get rid of some of that spill we're getting from the original shot. And you can kind of scrub through, just make sure that there's no other areas like that that are giving you issues. I think that's looking much better. And if you are zoomed in and you're kind of lost within the composition, a quick and easy way to get back out is just this little drop down right here and say fit up to 100%. That'll bring you right back to where you were. So that's looking pretty good, but let's say we wanna take it one step further and we wanna add a little bit of text into this frame. So let's go over to our character panel here. We're working with a font called Sophia Pro. I really like this font. Um, you can really use any font you want or download fonts off of a few websites, uh, but we're just gonna take this right here Go up to the text tool. Now you can see you got this little cursor here and basically you can click anywhere in the frame and type out whatever you're feeling. Uh, yeah. I got grilled cheese on the mind, all right? Don't judge me. <laughs> Okay, so grilled cheese, perfect. Exactly what we wanted for this shot. So to get this dead center in the frame, we go over to our line panel, boom. Now it's in the center. And if you're missing any of these panels, just keep in mind, you can always go up to window and just find the panel you're looking for up here and make sure it's checked. Okay, so we have our text, but let's say we want this text to kind of appear from behind these trees here, this mountain. We'll take this text layer and just drop it right in between those two. We'll sandwich it in there. Look at this, it's all planned. <laughs> so you'll see now, it can disappear behind our horizon, which is exactly what we're looking for. So if we just come over here, click P on the keyboard for position, and we can adjust this right from here, we'll take it just out of sight below the horizon, and we'll click on the stopwatch, uh, and you'll notice that we're not at the beginning of our timeline, so right where our cursor is, it created a keyframe. That's not what we want. So we're just gonna go ahead and take our cursor back to the beginning, and if you grab a keyframe, just a quick and easy way to snap it into position, just hold shift on your keyboard and it'll go right to your playhead, no matter where it is, right onto it. So we'll move that to the beginning, put that keyframe at the beginning, and let's say throughout the duration of this comp, we just want it to slowly reveal over the horizon. We'll leave a little bit tucked, so you're kind of getting that effect we're going for. We'll just leave it just tucked behind the mountain. So now you'll notice if we play this back, we now have our grilled cheese slowly revealing itself from the horizon. It's a majestic sight to see, I know. But <laughs> let's go ahead and get into making this animation a little smoother, having it kind of move a little more naturally, because right now it's just kind of robotic. So quickly just highlight click and drag to highlight your keyframes and just f9 on the keyboard you'll see that it'll turn from a diamond to an hourglass that's an effect called easy ease you're going to use it a lot whenever you're animating anything with keyframes i promise so from there we can see that it kind of smooths our animation out a little bit it has it ease in and ease out perfect now let's say we want to even take this uh, a little further. What you're going to want to do with both of the keyframes selected, click on this little button right here. This is your graph editor. You see we have a nice curve here. 
This graph editor is a very powerful tool whenever you get more advanced into keyframing. We'll just kind of dip our toes in a little bit. So if yours isn't showing up quite like this, make sure if you come down to choose graph type and options, make sure it's edit speed graph. Sometimes it shows up like this. Uh, I prefer to work with the speed. So now we see we have this nice ease in and ease out. Let's say we want it to kind of come on a little quicker and then ease off. If we just grab this, this would be our last keyframe. Click, hold shift and drag it so it stays right in line on the zero. Now you'll notice we have a different graph shape. This could work the other way as well if you just grab that one, click and drag, or say you wanna do something in the middle, you can click and give it a nice little arc right there. In our case, we're gonna go ahead, take this one to the front. And if it comes up like that, just holding shift will make it snap right back into place. To get out of our graph editor, just unclick that button. That's much better. It just gives you that that feeling of, of, of organicness. I don't really know what I'm trying to say here, but you feel it. There's one other thing we can do, and again, we'll just kind of dip our toes into this right now. You'll see over here, we have this mode here, and they all say normal right now. And if you can't see this, just click toggle switches and modes. Toggle switches and modes. And for our grilled cheese layer, sandwiched right in between, we'll go ahead, click on this. We got a lot of different options here, but in our particular case for this effect, we're gonna use the overlay option. And you'll see what that does is just take what is in the background, shine through your text a little bit. So you're getting that color that it just adds one more step of production value. I guess it's really not that crazy, <laughs> but it looks good. So we'll roll with it. So there are a ton of different ways that you can use masking to enhance your footage, elevate the production value. This is really just the surface level of it. So I encourage you play around with the mask, get comfortable with it. We'll cover it more in depth here in the future. But for now, thank you for tuning in to another After Effects Basics episode. If you have any questions or if there's anything I missed in this process, please let me know down in the the comments below. We're all just here to get better, to learn After Effects, so let's help each other out. This has been Greg Happ from Menagerie Studio. Make sure to click that like button, please. It helps us out a lot. Subscribe for future videos, and I'll get at you in the next one.